What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with John Jones reveals big career decision. UFC heavyweight champion John Jones has dropped an absolute bombshell this week when he revealed that he plans to retire after his upcoming fight against Stipe Miocic that's expected to take place later this year. The interview comes amid fans calling for Sergei Pavlovich to get a crack at the title after his recent first round knockout victory over Curtis Blades. During a recent interview with Fox Sports Australia, Bones brushed off a fight with Pavlovich while opening up on his future in the sport as he approaches 36 years old. Yeah, this kind of reminds me of like a, he reminds me of a Rampage Jackson, a Glover Teixeira, kind of uh, Alexander Gustafson, one of those guys who are kind of a one trick pony. And uh, I don't know if we'll ever fight, you know, right now my goal is to, is to have one more big fight against Stipe Miocic, Madison Square Garden, and then kind of hang it up from there. So who knows what the future holds, but yeah, he is exciting. According to Jones, while he seems to have his mind set on retiring after the Miocic fight, he admitted that he could very well wind up sticking around in the event that Francis Ngannou were to return to the UFC. Of course, so far, there's been no word as to when a fight with Miocic will take place. Initially, the UFC was targeting the bout for UFC 290 at International Fight Week. However, UFC President Dana White then revealed that the fight date was being pushed back. Since then, there's been no word on when the fight will take place. When it comes to Jones potentially sticking around for a fight with Ngannou, the odds seem rather slim that the fight ever materializes. After the UFC and Ngannou parted ways, Dana White made it very clear that he's sick and tired of dealing with Ngannou, and as a result, the Predator likely will never set foot in the octagon again. At the same time, Ngannou seems poised to compete for the PFL in the promotion's heavyweight tournament, shutting down any potential talk of the fight in the near future. Bilal Muhammad makes bold claim. With Bilal Muhammad's UFC 288 title eliminated against Gilbert Burns rapidly approaching this weekend, many are eager to see how things play out between two of the best welterweights in the world. While speaking with media members this week, Bilal Muhammad made quite the bold prediction regarding the welterweight title picture. The way he sees things, with a dominant performance, he'll actually wind up leapfrogging Colby Covington and secure himself a title fight with Leon Edwards later this year. Me, I think if I put on a great performance this weekend and, you know, get a tremendous finish or something, they're going Abu Dhabi, you think you're gonna have Leon fight Kobe in Abu Dhabi? Nah, you're gonna have me fight in Abu Dhabi. Of course, Dana White has guaranteed that Kobe Covington will be up next, meaning that the winner of the Muhammad versus Burns fight likely will in fact have to wait for Covington and Edwards to fight later this year. As Burns pointed out, even though he had secured a title shot with his win over Jorge Masvidal, with Leon Edwards sidelined for the immediate future, he knew that he had to fight in the meantime to maintain his number one contender spot. Leon Edwards gave an interview saying he, he's injury, he's not looking to fight right now, he just fight in October, that's where the first thing is say okay. With the stakes high heading into UFC 288, how do you see things playing out? Henry Cejudo eyeing two big fights after UFC 288. With Henry Cejudo's highly anticipated UFC 288 showdown with Aljamain Sterling right around the corner, Triple C has some pretty big plans. Following his fight with Aljamain Sterling, he wants to defend the belt against Bantamweight number one contender Sugar Sean O'Malley in Boston. After that, then Cejudo will move on to pursuing his ultimate goal, the title of C4. He's next. I wouldn't mind two tunas before I go against uh, Alexander Volkanovsky. You know, Sean O'Malley, he's that dirty Q-tip. You know, he's a he's a privileged brat. I think we all know that. And I'm going to hurt him. But first things first, uh, Al Jermaine's first. When it comes to a fight with Alexander Volkanovsky, Cejudo plans to take the fight to the featherweight champ's backyard and compete in Australia. Of course, first Volkanovsky will have to get through his upcoming title unification bout with Yair Rodriguez, which is expected to take place at UFC 290. With the UFC 288 main event rapidly approaching, do you think Cejudo has what it takes to claim UFC gold after three years away from the octagon? Drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Before we continue, make sure you give that like button some love and be sure to subscribe to the MMA Zone for all of the latest news. UFC Fight Updates This week has seen several upcoming cards undergo some pretty big shakeups. Without further ado, let's jump right in. The upcoming UFC 289 scrap between Stephen Wonderboy Thompson and Michael Pereira will no longer take place after it was revealed that contracts were never sent out for the fight. As a result, the bout is now expected to take place in July, giving fans hope that it could potentially be added to the UFC's big International Fight Week card. This week also saw Juliana Pena pull out of her upcoming trilogy fight with Amanda Nunes at UFC 289. 
As a result, Irene Aldana has now stepped in to compete for the women's bantamweight title. Aldana will be entering the fight on a two-bout win streak that recently saw her pick up a KO win over Macy Chasson at UFC 279. Next up, we have a heavyweight fight announcement for UFC Jacksonville on June 24th, where Justin Taffa will meet Austin Lane. Taffa will be entering the bout on a two-fight win streak that recently saw him defeat Parker Porter at UFC 284, while Lane will be entering his UFC debut on a six-fight win streak. Last but certainly not least, we have a clash between Ivana Petrovich and Luana Carolina on tap for UFC Vegas 76 on July 1st. Petrovich will be entering the bout looking to preserve her undefeated record in her UFC debut, while Carolina will be looking to snap a two-fight skid. Francis Ngannou's coach sheds light on terms of UFC's contract. Many have questioned why former UFC heavyweight champion Francis Ngannou had turned down what UFC president Dana White called one of the biggest contracts in UFC history. According to Ngannou's coach, Eric Nixick, had the Predator accepted the contract and then wound up losing to Jon Jones, his pay would have significantly dropped. While plenty of claims regarding Ngannou and his negotiations have been making the rounds, Nixick wanted to set the record straight, tweeting, it wasn't eight million per fight. Had he lost to Jon, his pay would have significantly dropped, Nixick wrote. That was one of the hangups in re-signing. He had no protection if he lost to arguably the MMA GOAT. I think there's a lot of misinformation being tossed around. Of course, Ngannou has stated repeatedly that the real problem with the UFC's contracts wasn't money. As he revealed at the time of his departure from the promotion, he wanted three things. Health insurance for fighters, a fighter representative at Endeavor board meetings, and the right for fighters to secure their own sponsorships. While he knew that the promotion would not agree on all the terms, he hoped the two sides could reach a middle ground and compromise. When the UFC showed an unwillingness to negotiate on any of the terms, the two sides went their separate ways. Robert Whittaker claims Israel Adesanya doesn't want a trilogy fight. Former champion Robert Whittaker is currently gearing up for his title eliminator fight with Drakus Duplessis at UFC 290. Ahead of the fight, Whittaker believes that middleweight champion Israel Adesanya does not want to face him in a trilogy fight, given the fact that he was able to take the champ down four times over five rounds the last time they fought. During a recent interview, Whitaker pointed out that he's been evolving with every fight, and in a potential trilogy fight with Adesanya, he likes his odds. Yeah, oh, he just doesn't want to fight me. <laughs> you know, I, Why? I, I'm, I'm the hardest fight in the, in the division for him. And, you know, that first one, not so good for me. The second one, nearly. Very close. <laughs> this, this third one, though, you know, I, I, I have a really good feeling. I, um, I've been evolving every fight. You can see it if you watch back my fights. Every fight, I've been getting better. And I think I am the biggest threat to him and his reign at the, at the present moment. So, of course. After Adesanya recently captured a win over Alex Pereira in the pair's fourth meeting, Whitaker saw hope in getting another crack at the title and a win over his longtime competitive rival. With a win over streaking contender Dracus Duplessis, he'll have the chance to punch his ticket to a third fight with the last stylebender in hopes of reclaiming UFC gold. And now for our breaking news story of the day, we have Dana White canceling another UFC 288 fight. Daniel Santos versus Johnny Munoz Jr. is off of the UFC 288 card due to Daniel Santos getting an injury during his fight camp. What do you think of these last minute changes to UFC 288? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching the video. Make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with MMA news every day. Here are the top comments from yesterday's video. I'm excited to see Edwards versus Covington. Khabib revealing shocking news will be remembered for generations. All of the McGregor fans genuinely need to accept that the Conor McGregor they knew and loved stayed in the year 2016-2017-ish. It's not easy to accept that, but it's the truth all the same. I hope he goes to the UFC and put his talents up against John Jones. And those were the top comments from yesterday's video. If you want to be featured on our next video, make sure to leave a comment and don't forget to check out yesterday's video in case you missed it.